Hey coach, just describe the difference in your team between the first half and the second and what went wrong. Uh, well, I thought the third quarter um, was, was where everything turned. Um, obviously, we got off to a great start. Um, you know, they closed that second quarter uh, on a run, but the start of that third quarter, Katie, and third quarter overall was just um, awful. 41 points allowed. Uh, they shot 84% for the third quarter, and they were 9 of 12 from the three-point line uh, for 75%. Um, so, you know, I told our players, you know, everybody's blaming the refs and, and looking at the refs at the end of the game. Uh, the referees had nothing to do with that third quarter defense and not being ready to play. Uh, Blake got hot in that quarter, got them back in the game. And, um, you know, that's two, two games now back to back last night and tonight where fourth quarter offense was a real struggle. Uh, turnovers, we had five turnovers in the fourth quarter, only one assist. Um, and obviously we only scored 15 points. We were 0 for 7 from 3 and shot 26% from the field. Um, so I'm sure our guy's a little bit tired. Uh, we had another guy miss the game uh, and Aaron Gordon. So um, silver lining, Marcus Howard, Vlatko, guys that got a chance to play, bowl. Uh, they got a chance to play some real game minutes. And uh, those guys did a pretty good job. Kyle Fredrickson. Hey, Michael, just a quick update on Aaron. Do you expect him to be back on Tuesday? And with Paul Millsap, uh, was there any reason that, that he didn't get any minutes tonight? Uh, Aaron Gordon, uh, I think he was leaning towards trying to play tonight. Um, you know, but I, I, I didn't see the value in him going out there, um, not feeling 100%. Um, so it was kind of my call. He wanted to give it a go. My call to shut him down. Uh, so this is more... Uh, just precautionary. He felt something, didn't feel really comfortable. Uh, so I made the decision to shut him down. Uh, and Paul Millsap, tonight was our third game in four nights. Uh, I had talked to Paul earlier in the day uh, that I was going to hold him out um, just due to his age, this juncture of the season, and the sheer volume of games that we have played as of late. And more? There's no conspiracy there, so don't read into it. Uh, we asked Nicola about the, not only the physical drain on the season, but the mental drain. The guys, are, obviously, this has been a nightmare season for everybody, including yourself. Your rotation is so short. You've got four games left. You're two back of the Clippers. It's still catchable, but that's going to be tough. And there's not probably a lot of advantage from between the third and the fourth seed. But with your rotation so short, are you going to be able to get guys a mental rest over this next week? to get bodies and minds right before the playoffs? Do you have enough room in the rotation to do that? Um, I guess we'll see. <laughs> uh, you know, we'll come Tuesday, we'll find out uh, who's available for the Charlotte game. I know Monte Morris is getting closer and closer. Um, hopefully Aaron Gordon will be feeling better by then. We can uh, maybe uh, get a chance to get out there and play. Um, the one silver lining uh, from the playing tournament for us is that after our game on Sunday in Portland, uh, we will have that entire week to prepare for the opening weekend of the playoffs, which will probably start on that Saturday. Um, so those days will be really valuable uh, mentally and physically, Matt, to get, get our guys a break while preparing for the first round. Um, regarding the last four games, uh, I'm going to try to uh, get some of our high-minute guys, Nicola, Michael, Faku, um, Aaron Gordon, all those guys, if I can get them a game or two, uh, we'll definitely look to do that. But as you mentioned, uh, we have to have healthy players behind that to be able to do that. So um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens as we move forward. Ryan Blackburn. Coach, I know that tonight may not be the best approximation for it, but this team has had some struggles, like you mentioned earlier in the fourth quarter, just generating offense consistently. When Nicola is off the floor, especially with guys out as, as often as they are, who do you turn to in those situations and how important is that going to be as the playoffs come about? Yeah, um, I don't think we've had a season long issue in the fourth quarter. Uh, I don't know if you're alluding to that. I wouldn't agree with that. I would definitely agree that tonight and last night it was a huge issue at Utah at home. Um, and obviously, Nicole is going to be the centerpiece. Uh, and for a long time, obviously, we had a two-man game of Jamal Murray and Nicole that was 
um, you know, some of the best closing basketball that the NBA uh, has uh, currently. So with no Jamal, no Will, no PJ, no Monte, and tonight no Aaron, you know, you're, you're asking guys to do things that maybe they're not accustomed to, or at least here, not accustomed to doing it in a Denver Nugget uniform. Um, you know, we had a couple of stretches late, two, three minutes to go, where we got stops and we had transition opportunities. Uh, we just couldn't finish. We couldn't score. We turned the ball over. And uh, so that's something that we have to look at. But uh, as we move forward and we get Nicole the rest he needs, uh, I know in the fourth quarter, he's been one of the more clutch players in recent years. And uh, we're going to play through him and other guys have to be ready to step up and make plays because a lot of teams right now are doubling Nicola, making him give the ball up, showing him a crowd and forcing somebody else in that team to make a shot. Uh, we only made 14 out of 41 threes tonight. So hopefully we can find a way to shoot the ball a little bit better to keep the defense honest. Vinny Benedetto. Hey, Michael, have you been at all surprised with uh, Faku's ability to score with these with the more opportunities he's, he's had over the last few weeks? Um, I wouldn't say so. I mean, the, the one question mark you could say uh, regarding Faku's game uh, was his ability to make shots, the three ball. Can he make shots from the three-point line consistently? Uh, obviously, tonight he goes three or six. He got to the foul line eight times, um, 19 points, and he's so quick and – you know, he's such a smart player. He knows that 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 big guy does not want to leave Nicola's body, whether it's in pick and roll in the post. And he's taking advantage of that. He's put, putting a tremendous amount of pressure on the opposing team's defense, uh, which is great to see. Um, so, you know, Michael got it going early tonight. Obviously, Nicola, 29, 7 and 6. Austin, Faku, all guys in double figures. Uh, and obviously, Marcus Howard, you know, really happy for Marcus. Uh, that kid has just worked his butt off the whole year long. And, uh, you know, to throw him out there in the middle of the game, first half, meaningful minutes, uh, it was great to see him go out there and, and respond and produce the way he did. So uh, happy for Marcus as a, as a side note. All right, Coach, we got time for one more. And Sean Keeler. Michael, you talk about how good a closing combination you know, Jamal and Nicole have been, and we get spoiled watching that finish that does michael have to be that guy as good as he starts games often for you one and and what kind of challenge is that rotation when you're playing injury musical chairs for like weeks yeah. to set this up it's like a pitching rotation you don't have any pitchers lined up yeah well the first question sean uh yeah my, michael has to i mean if it's not michael who is it um you know you look at michael and nicola's productivity in the 15, 16 games now with Jamal Murray out to injury. I think we're 12 and four in that stretch, stretch which is really remarkable because you couple Jamal's injury with Will, Monte, PJ, uh, Aaron Gordon tonight. And that was a tough thing tonight was, uh, you know, that, that happened, you know, very, you know, uh, close to the tip off. So you're, you're preparing all day with certain matchups defensively, certain things offensively. And then all of a sudden you're switching your lineup and your rotation last minute. Uh, and it is a challenge. I mean, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't because every game you're saying, OK, um, we don't have any smalls. That's why we tried playing big. You know, we played Michael at the two, Aaron at the three, Paul four, Nicola five, because we didn't have a lot of smalls. Um, so it's definitely a challenge. But, you know, it's, it's one that we have to embrace because that's just our status. That is who we are right now. We have a lot of guys out to injury. So you have to find a way to figure it out and find a group that's going to go out there and play the right way. That's two games in a row. Uh, mind you, Brooklyn's the number one offense in the NBA. Utah is one of the top four offenses in the NBA. But to give up 127 last night, 125 tonight, uh, a 41-point quarter, regardless of the injuries and the musical chairs that you mentioned, uh, we have to find a way to defend a lot better. And, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to do that on this upcoming road trip. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thanks, guys.